This is the transition. This is the transition. This is the transition. It's a very slight tra As this hand goes to my waist, I slightly turn my upper body, and now I am in a Philly shell. So it's no reason. <laughs> your boy coach Anthony professional boxing teacher I've been teaching boxing for over 10 years and I've been involved with the sport for 20 working with numerous world title contenders and world champions from boxing to MMA and even some top level amateurs all the way up to the Olympic level and now I'm here to teach you today we're gonna to talk about what I feel what I'm known for right is the Philly show a lot of people they come to me and they're always like coach Anthony I love the fact that you teach the Philly shell, man. There's not too many teachers out there who like to teach the Philly shell. You know, I, I've done hundreds of Zoom sessions, and thank you guys, by the way, for the for the support. Uh, hundreds of Zoom sessions where that's exactly what people want to talk about. Oh, I purchased your Philly shell video. I love it, but I don't have anybody to drill it with, so I want to go over it with you. And I've heard so many success stories, and I've seen it with my own eyes. People who don't know the Philly show, who focus on it, and actually got pretty good at uh, doing the Philly show by watching my video. And if you don't have the Philly show video, I highly, highly recommend it. And it will be in the website, coachanthonyboxing.com in the link description below. But what I wanna talk about is the problem with it. And the other thing that I wanna talk about is how we can fix this problem. So we're not only, we're gonna, we're gonna attack the problem and then we're gonna come up with a solution. So the first thing is this, when people learn the Philly show, right? Let's come over here a little bit. When, when people learn the Philly show, you know, people treat boxing, a lot of the times I feel like it's, uh, they, like they have to pick and choose a style. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm a Philly show fighter, or I'm a Mexican style fighter, or I'm a UK, European, hands up high fighter, or, I'm this, I'm that. That's not how you should approach boxing. And the problem with the Philly shell is once people learn it because there's so many dynamics and so many interesting and cool things you could do from the Philly shell, people feel like, I'm a Philly shell fighter. This is my style. I'm Floyd Mayweather. I'm James Tony. I'm Pernell Whitaker. I don't fight with my hands up high. I feel a lot more comfortable with the lead hand low. And then what ends up happening is they go into the ring, they throw a jab, their lead hand is low, and boom, they get cracked. And then they're looking at me and watching my YouTube video saying, Coach Anthony, you said the Philly shell was going to work for me. Why am I getting hit with right hands? Um, because you're focused too much on doing the Philly shell, and you're not focusing on avoiding the right hand necessarily. You're too caught up in wanting to do the Philly shell. Okay, just because the Philly show is something that I teach does not mean that it's for everybody. That's for one thing. Was food for one fighter is poison for another. Okay, that's the first thing. Another thing is when you are doing the Philly show, you do it when it's needed. You don't just do it to do it. All right, so I'm going to give you first, I'm going to go over some quick key points of the Philly show. All right, but if you really want to go into detail, like I said, go to the website. My website has the Philly Show full complete system. And let me tell you, it's fantastic. You will not regret it, I guarantee it. But that's not the point of this video. The point is to describe the mistakes. But anyway, I'm in the Philly Show, right? Hands up, place this here, chin's tucked. Now this hand does two things, right? This is the windshield wiper, right? I, over the years, I've seen different trainers talk about different methods of the right hand. Some say it should be here, some say it should be here. I like to keep it somewhere around the right side of my chin. Because from right here, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can catch everything up the middle, okay? But the thing is this, if a guy is hitting me, let's just say on the top of the head, I'm trying to show the rope, but there's still that hole on the top of the head, you know what I'm saying? Or my lead hand is low and I'm not able to time the shoulder roll. So as I go to time it, the shot slides through and catches me as I'm turning the shoulder. Guess what I'm gonna do? See that? I'm gonna pick my damn hand up. Just pick your hand up. 
You don't gotta sit there and keep your, oh, I'm a Philly Shell fighter, so guess what? I only fight out the Philly Shell. Now, if I'm boxing somebody, and I'm jabbing to the body, and I'm doing different stuff, and as I go ahead and my lead hand is low, that right hand comes, boom, I can shoulder roll. Or if I'm on the ropes and shots are coming at me, and I feel like I can't see because I'm blinding myself because the gloves is up, then I transfer to this, drop down, bend the waist, do the other things that the Philly show is so good to do, then I bring it out. Now let me show you one more time what I'm talking about. This is a traditional boxing stance. Hands up high, you know, able to work both hands, pretty balanced, hands up, toe heel alignment. When I go into a Philly show, one thing that's happening is I'm turning a little bit, and that's all it is. So you notice, this is the transition. This is the transition. This is the transition. It's a very slight trend. As this hand goes to my waist, I slightly turn my upper body, and now I am in a Philly show. So it's no reason for you guys to only be in love with one style. You use both, if you could use both. Some of you guys need to just be standing right here. I'm gonna be honest with you. Some of you guys might actually be better here. Maybe this makes you feel uncomfortable, but you have to use both. A great example of that is when Floyd Mayweather fought Sugar Shane Mosley. He went out there, his lead hand was low, boom, he got cracked, he had to hold on, but guess what, those hands came up. Those hands came up as soon as he got hurt. So what you have to remember is, the Philly show is just a tool. Hands up high is a tool. You know what I'm saying, uh, in and out movement, being aggressive, being slick, ripping to the body, calm, everything is a tool, and you put the tools together. All right, so don't think for a second that because you're learning the Philly show, you're a Philly show fighter. You're more so a guy who knows how to use the Philly show when needed. And that's the biggest mistake I see people make when they do the Philly show. They think that they are now a Philly show fighter. You are a boxer, and a boxer needs as many weapons, as many tools defensively and offensively as possible. So make sure you keep your brain open and you know when to use the tools. We give you the paint brushes, you paint your own picture, but you gotta have the right colors, you gotta have the right brushes, you gotta have all the right tools, right? You need a wrench. You don't hammer a nail into a wall with a wrench, right? You use a hammer. You use a wrench to unscrew a screw. It's the same thing for boxing, right? Use the Philly show when you need it, hands up high when you need it, and there you go. Guys, go to the website, coachanthonyboxing.com, and I'm telling you right now, everything on there you're gonna be super, super happy with. Okay? And um, just be ready for it, all right? And uh, 2021, we're coming with a lot, a lot of heat. So just stay tuned. Boxing. Hello, oh, guys. It's your boy, Coach Anthony. You guys made a wise decision. Defense is one of the first things that you should learn in boxing. You see it? Uh, anybody can throw a punch, but not everybody knows how to defend one. Not everybody knows how to evade one. Not everybody knows how to block one. A lot of the old timers would say that defense is the first thing you should learn when you go into a boxing gym as opposed to learning how to throw punches. I agree because, you know, without defense, how are you going to protect yourself? We all know that defense is 50% of boxing and people only train it 25% of the time and wonder why they get hit twice as much, right? It's just simple math. We're going to cover everything from the very beginning and then we're going to go ahead and build that up. Whether you have a lot of experience, and you just wanna go over the fundamentals or whether you're just starting out and you're trying to learn all this stuff, you made a very wise decision. This is the video for you. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started.